human nature is kind of an interesting little beast. Uh, we tend to believe that this stuff just isn't going to happen to us. Why you don't hear about them saving lives is because it's a non-event. People who die, children who die, um, are someone's child. Property is one thing to save, but a human life's another. Orange County Fire Authority had a unique opportunity to show the effectiveness of residential sprinklers at a Tustin Air Station. We took two buildings that were fire loaded the same, which means the combustible material inside the buildings were as close to identical as possible. The only difference between the two was one was equipped with fire sprinklers while the other was not. This room is furnished to represent a typical bedroom. There are pictures on the wall, drapes covering the windows, a bed with pillows and blankets, as well as other items. The fire is started in a trash can. As the fire grows, it starts to make a run up the drapes. It takes just 60 seconds to activate the smoke alarm down the hall. As the temperature rises and the toxic smoke becomes dense, your chance of survival decreases by the second. The temperature in the room has risen so fast that your next breath would sear the lining of your lungs if the toxic smoke hasn't already taken your life. Listen closely. You can hear the hallway smoke alarm melting as the fire, radiant heat, and smoke spread throughout the rest of the structure. This time, smoke and flames attract neighbors' attention. Fire emergency. I'm walking by a residence at 6830 Super Stallion and there's fire and smoke actually coming out of an upstairs window. Once the 911 call has been received, it will take approximately six minutes until the first unit arrives on scene. Region 222, copy your request for a second alarm, six flex well involved, the battalion flex. It is now 13 and a half minutes into the burn, and the entire room is engulfed in flames. As firefighters enter the structure, they must first extinguish fire that has spread throughout the building, and then make their way towards the point of origin. In this room, the smoke alarm was placed in the bedroom and activates 10 seconds after ignition. In the previous burn, the smoke alarm was located in the hallway and took approximately a minute to activate. We see the same fire behavior displayed as before as it rises from the trash can and continues to grow and become hotter. As it grows and consumes the combustibles on the wall, the fire begins to roll across the ceiling. The sprinkler then activates, cooling down the room, and within minutes, puts out the fire. Keep in mind, in the previous burn, the fire department didn't even arrive until six minutes after the 911 call. Common sense would tell you that sprinklers are a good thing, but I had no idea of how dramatic uh, sprinklers can be in actually putting out fires without the presence of firefighters. On the non-sprinkler side, there was total devastation. The only thing that remained was the frame of the bed and wire hangers in the closet where the clothes were once hung. Uh, the fire gutted the entire room. Um, when you looked at the damage throughout the rest of the uh, structure, um, what, what I thought was interesting was there was still a substantial amount of damage, but there was no what we call fire loading in the rest of the building, which would mean furniture and other combustibles. So it, it completely destroyed that entire room. In fire prevention, what really surprised us was the temperature. And not the temperature at the ceiling, which we expected to rise quickly, but how quickly the temperature rose at the lower levels. Within two minutes, it was over 200 degrees, which made it an untenable space. On the sprinkler side, it was a completely different story. 
As the fire moved up the walls and started lapping at the ceiling, the sprinkler activated and extinguished the fire within a very short period of time. You had a little bit of scorching on the wall, uh, some damage to the container where the, the origin of the fire was in the trash can, and a little bit of water, and that was pretty much it. There's no question that fire sprinklers save lives. There's no question that they work. The reason why you don't hear about it is that it is a non-news event in that nobody dies, seldom is there an injury, and there's very little property damage. We'll respond units. By the time we get there, we cancel the rest of the units as a uh, small mop-up operation, and that's all that's done. I understand that uh, developers, people who build uh, homes and apartments and commercial buildings, uh, have a lot of heartburn over sprinklers because they do add cost, they add expense to construction. But I would suggest to you uh, that any developer, any builder who actually sees a demonstration, a real life demonstration of what sprinklers do will change their mind rather quickly. What really convinced me was how quickly the, the sprinklers uh, attacked the, uh, the fire. Uh, how quickly the temperatures dropped and it would have given, I think, any occupant a reasonable opportunity to get out. This is one of those add-ons that is just a, kind of a no-brainer, it seems to me. Yeah, you're going to pay another, you know, $1,500, $2,000, uh, $2,500 in the price of your home for sprinklers, but look what you get for it, you know. I mean, people are paying uh, far more than that kind of money for some ridiculous cosmetic improvements in their homes uh, and they pay it willingly. Um, people see fire sprinklers portrayed differently in the Hollywood through movies. Um, for example, you know, you might see the prankster that takes a match and lights off a sprinkler head and then the whole building, all the sprinklers start spraying water and that just doesn't happen. It's just the one sprinkler head over the fire and as the fire grows, it, it, there may be a few other sprinkler heads that activate, but you don't have the, the deluge throughout the entire structure like they portray in the movies. Residential fires are not only dangerous to civilians, but to firefighters as well. When you see what it is that firefighters have to do and the risk they have to uh, place themselves to fight a fire that otherwise would have been out before they even arrived, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's frightening. It's, uh, it's so dangerous. Um, and this eliminates the danger, eliminates it. The advantage to having a residential sprinkler system installed is that's basically like having a full-time firefighter 24-7 on duty right there in every single room of your house ready to activate at any given moment and they will have that fire extinguished before the fire department even arrives. I think if city councils uh, had an opportunity to see the demonstration that I saw and if OCFA could present uh, information on the actual cost is that I believe that the majority of councils would be convinced that, that their residents would be protected by residential fire sprinklers at a minimal cost. A month after this demonstration, Orange County experienced two similar residential fires, both starting in the kitchen. During the first fire, a young female teenager was taking an afternoon nap while the fire advanced through the house and took her life. Two weeks later, a six-month-old baby girl was left unattended in a high chair when a fire ignited. As the fire grew, fire sprinklers activated, sparing the child's life. Here we live in one of the most technologically advanced nations in the world, and yet we're allowing people to die in residence uh, because of no sprinklers. I mean, every fire that I've gone to where there's been a fatality, had there been fire sprinklers there, not only would the damage been minimized, but a person would be alive to tell about that. Any developer, any builder who actually sees a demonstration, a real life demonstration of what sprinklers do will change their mind rather quickly. You cannot put a price on life.